Thank you for joining me in creation of Kingdom of Air Art. I'm Spunky Monkey. As you can see behind me, I've been busy. I've got some work. I hope you guys enjoyed the last episode. Uh, this time we're going to get a little more in depth. Um, we're going to be creating the vault system. As you can see back here, I've come. We're at the back side of the vaults uh, from the front. Uh, here's the returns uh, box. The go to the vault box and the purchase the vault box. Uh, obviously, it's in reverse from the front out there. Uh, here are, I have 10 vaults created. So you're in a vault, uh, that box will be gone. That's just there for uh, testing purposes, that sign right there. Um, and I'll be putting another sign here, press the button return. But uh, yeah, so you'll, you'll have access to your chest. And uh, I think it's a real si simple system. Um, you know, uh, basically the idea is, you know, I want a vault for each player if they you know prefer to pay for it and uh, the price will be 64 emeralds I'll take a take a real run out to the front here okay so we have uh, purchase a vault for 64 emeralds so you'll have to have 64 emeralds in your account as you can see off to the right over there emeralds I currently have none this I'll explain when we get to it uh, it's mostly for testing purposes it'll be gone but uh, yeah for 64 um, emeralds in your account you'd come up here and you press the button and you'd be able to purchase a vault so it's just you know a real simple concept here go to vault and you press this button once you have a vault and then you press the button and you would go to whatever particular vault number you have and as you can see they are all numbered uh, 1 through 10 and I do have 10 volts in this one but once they're filled up you can't purchase any more vaults. So uh, how do I get to this point? Well, you have to take one step at a time. You break it down into all the different steps. Now I have a testing board over here and I built it over here because there is no more uh, command box going to the return vault. This is just where you uh, teleport to in order to come back from the vault. See, this is where you teleport back from. Uh, so what I have here is uh, here's my show account so I can see how many emeralds I got and then I can add 64 emeralds and again it's all for testing purposes uh, so I can just press this button and all of a sudden add 64 emeralds to my account so breaking it down the first thing I need is a um, okay here's a vault number I have a show vault number and then I can set vault number to one and then I show vault and set vault to zero. So first thing I need is a counter so that everybody that does purchase one, purchase a vault, uh, has a unique number to it. So the first thing we need to do is add a vault number objective. So we will take care of that right now. And it is scoreboard. If I can type. <laughs> Scoreboard objectives add vault num and it's a dummy. Oop. Now, because this is a counter, I'm not going to be displaying it, uh, so I'm not going to put a display name on it at all. So, voila, there we go, we have a vault number now. So, now we have one of an objective that we can increment for each purchase of the vault so that everybody gets a unique number. So now we need to have that vault number um, for each individual person that does purchase one. So that will be basically the same same um, coding. Add vault, and it is a dummy. And again, it will not be displayed so I'm not going to put a display name in there. You're not going to really uh, uh, know your vault number. Okay, so now I have vault num and vault number. Now we can uh, press on the button here. So you can see the vault num has no, there's no number, no players and nothing on there. And on vault, it's the same thing. So what I need to do is I need to set vault for the individual players to zero now i can do that here but i actually what i need to do is set that to zero for each individual player when you first start the game so i'm going to take you to the command block area that i have created 
Okay, here's where the first word is, and as you can see, I did some modifications to it. I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do here yet, but I'll, I'll work on that yet. Uh, but here is the command block area. Uh, so basically, this is where you are going to spawn when you first join this game. Uh, you actually spawn one block up, okay? And then you drop down onto this plate. And then this is where I can run a string of command blocks for what you get when you spawn. Uh, you know, I'll probably spawn you with a certain amount of emeralds in your inventory so you can buy some things to... Uh, you know, start yourself off with, whether it be wooden swords, leather armor, you know, that type of stuff. Um, so what we need to do is we need, I already got it to where you set emeralds to zero, as you can see, so that the emeralds uh, objective starts up at zero for each individual player that starts. Now, at the end of the string, once I'm finally done, I will teleport you to the true start of the game. So you will Basically, it'll just be a real quick flash when you come in here. Um, it'll you'll press on this pressure plate. It'll activate any command blocks that I have in here, and I might go ahead and just put it all on a function, uh, which we'll get into in a little bit. But I want to take, like I said, one step at a time here. So what we need to do is we need to put down a command block here, and I will show you how I did that. We want that as a chain unconditional because we want it to run no matter what always active okay and what we're doing here is set the vault to zero for each individual player that starts the game <clears throat> so the zero means you currently do not own a vault and that's players set at p now of course i need to put coordinates in here we need it to set the vault objective to zero scoreboard player set so basically when you start off in here and like I said you actually spawn one block high and then fall down onto this pressure plate which will activate it so it'll set your emeralds objective to zero so you have no emeralds to start the game off with in your account uh, so basically I use a lowercase v for the objective and then I use a uppercase v to explain the vault itself uh, so right off the bat, when you start off, you spawn here, you fall down, you trigger this pressure plate, and your uh, emeralds objective will get set to zero, so you don't start off the game with any emeralds in your account. And you set the vault to zero, which means you do not own any vaults. So while I'm in here, I'll, I'll show a few other things I set up. So here is a uh, daylight sensor, and this detects day. And you can see right now, this one over here is lit. This is also a daylight uh, detector, but it is set for night. Uh, so you can see that they are, this one's lit, so it must be night right now. Let me uh, just grab that and we'll just pop that out. Yep, sure is, it's night right now. So um, actually it looks like it's about to change pretty soon, but it is, this one turns off, this one will turn on. So instead of these lamps, I can actually set command blocks uh, to run whatever commands I need between day and night, uh, such as the gates opening and closing throughout the castle, uh, you know, that type of thing. And I did clear all this out. I did have to rebuild some of this accidentally. I was using command blocks to clear this out, so I accidentally deleted uh, the back part of the, <laughs> the, the word. The word itself was fine. It was just that little area. So let's go ahead and back to the vault area. Okay, so now that we've got that taken care of, uh, the first thing I need to do is set the vault number to one. And like I said, this is our counter. Um, let's go ahead and, okay, vault is already showing, but you see my name isn't on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my own vault number to zero. And there it is, see, spunky monkey. And it's the same, the same code, except I don't have the coordinates on here. Like I said, this is all pure testing purposes, just to make sure everything's working fine. Uh, but yeah, so I'm set my own vault to zero, which means I do not own any vaults. And again, I have no emeralds currently. So we'll go ahead and take that back to vault. There we go. Now what we need to do is we can show the vault number. And the vault number, there's nothing in there. So we, we need a vault number to, as a counter to assign the particular vaults themselves. So here's the command for that. Now you'll notice a little bit of difference here. It's scoreboard players set and I use my own name instead of the closest player 
And the reason why I do that is because I'm the only one that's going to have this vault number. Now, is because my player is on there doesn't mean that it's not going to work when you get the map. This player does not have to even exist. So I'm just using my name as a placeholder for it. Uh, so basically, this is going to set the vault number to 1, which is the 0 plus 1. So 0, you don't own a vault. So the first person to purchase one will get assigned vault number 1. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now we've got no emeralds. The vault number is 1 as our counter. And then my individual vault is 0, which means I don't own one. Now all these command blocks here at the end are just so they activate that button to return from each individual bolt, which we'll get to. So now that we have the variables all set up, the next thing we need to do is be able to purchase a vault. And so we're going to actually start right here. I'm going to have to get rid of that, I think. We might be able to put it back in later. But, oh, um, <clears throat> while I'm thinking about it, silly me, I... I, I was probably like out of <laughs> out of command blocks for a while doing uh, the bedrock zoo, but uh, this part right here is is really unnecessary. Don't need it. It's not hurting anything at being here, but uh, I really don't need it. You can see down there I don't have it on that one, and it worked fine. And because I'm stringing the command blocks together, it is completely unnecessary. This I had to do for for other things. Uh, there's a map called Poker Run I did, and it doesn't use the scoreboard system is way before the scoreboard uh, was was activated here in Bedrock. So I had to figure out other ways of trying to recreate the scoreboard system without having a scoreboard system, and that's where this came in. So this, this actually is totally unnecessary. These command blocks can go right up against that block, and it'll work fine. I, I will probably fix that later uh, off screen. But I just want to let you guys know you're probably yelling at me, you don't need that, you don't need that. <laughs> I can hear you already. But... Uh, so basically what we've got here is we need to, okay, so when they, they press the purchase button, this is the first command block that's going to get activated by the purchase button. So like I said, we're breaking it down into steps. So the first thing we need to do is we need to test to make sure that the player doesn't already own a vault. You can only get one vault. And this will stay as an impulse, unconditional, needs redstone, and this command is scoreboard players and we want to test and it's at p and then of course the coordinates and we want to test that the vault of the individual players vault oh, let me open this and we want to test that the individual players vault is zero zero and the first zero is the minimum and the second zero is maximum so by doing this we're we're making sure that the player does not own a vault it has to vault has to be at zero for that individual player in order for this to activate so now that we've got that test done we need this we need to add a second command block and this command block is to test to make sure that the player has 64 emeralds in the account. No, no, no pay, no play, right? So this one we need as a chain and we need it conditional to make sure that that first one passes before this one is activated. And this command is scoreboard players test at P coordinates again. <clears throat> Okay, and now we got the coordinates in. We're going to test the emeralds objective. Let's do this. We need to test the emeralds objective to make sure that there are 64 in the player's account. I don't think there's going to be enough room in this room. So what I'm going to have to do is, I'll, I'll go ahead and show you real quick. I think what I'm going to do is control click and control click. And I'm going to go ahead and dig into the ground here. Okay, so now it's pointing down. So basically this whole command string is going to go underground. There we go. Now we're caught back up. Okay, so basically this whole command string, and you activate this, it'll trigger this and then start, start running the commands down. 
That way I don't have to worry about it taking over, <coughs> excuse me, taking over the whole room. You'll see that this test one, this go to will actually be kind of long. Okay, so now that we're testing to make sure that the vault is at zero, that the player doesn't currently own a vault, which you can see on the right, I do not have a vault. And your next test is to make sure that they have 64 emeralds in the account, which I currently do not have. So I'm gonna go ahead and give myself 64 emeralds. And that's just a real simple add 64 to my emerald account is all that this is. I'll leave this up for a second, here we go. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and show my vault again and make sure that vault number is currently set for at one. Okay, so now that we have both of those tests done, we need the third command block, and it is going to be a chain. And again, conditional, because we want to make sure that it, act, it doesn't activate unless the uh, command block before it is OK. So we remove the 64 emeralds from the player's account. Do this. <laughs> Do it now. Scoreboard, players, remove, at P, and yes, the coordinates, and we want to remove from the emeralds objective the 64 emeralds from that individual player standing on the carpet. So, so far we got, we test to make sure they have no vault. So if, if you do already own a vault, it'll fail right off the bat and you won't get a second vault. Uh, if you don't have the 64 emeralds in your account, you don't get a vault. And then if you do, this one will get activated to remove the 64 emeralds from your account. And once that's all completed, <clears throat> the next command block is an operation. This was the most, this was the most difficult <laughs> command to actually do. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, I call it Operation Vault. And it'll also be chain, conditional, and always active. So the command for this is scoreboard, players, and this will be a new one here, it's operation. And we got at P, and of course the coordinates. Okay, and we've got, we want the vault objective of the player to equal my individual fault number. And like I said, this player does not have to be active. So just because my name is on there, I don't have to be playing on the world with you guys for this to work. But my name is the one holding the vault number to assign the vaults. So what this is saying is that it's going to create an operation for the player standing on that carpet. It's changing that player's vault ob objective to equal the vault number, which as you, if you recall, I'm showing the vault right now, fly. So the vault number is one. So basically it'll change this zero to one, which means vault one will be mine. And here's one right here. The next command block, and you notice all the arrows, they have this little dip here, which means they're all conditional so far. So each one, the, end, the command block before it has to work for it to work. So on this one, what we're going to do is add one to the vault number so that each individual player gets a different vault. So this is basically just a counter. And always active. Okay, and this command, scoreboard players add, oops, to my own individual vault number, add one. Okay, so now just as, a, as, a, as an example here, we have the test for the vault to make sure that the vault is at zero for the individual player. Make sure they have enough emeralds in their account. Then we remove those emeralds from their account. And then we do the operation where we um, equal 
the individual player's vault number with my own personal vault number, the objective vault num. And then this one, we increment the vault num by one. So the next player will get vault two. And you'll see that in action once we do some testing. Okay, now we add another command block. And what we want on this one is we want it as, an, again, a chain, and again, conditional, and again, always active. And we just want to say, thank you. And this is actually a tell, so it'll whisper it to you, but I only want the individual player to hear this. So it's tell, and then, of course, the coordinates. Okay, and we want to say thank you for purchasing your vault. And there I go. I polite, say thank you. Okay, then after that it occurred to me that, well, there's only 10 volts. Okay, so what happens if all 10 volts are sold and somebody comes here to purchase it? So to alleviate that little problem, we need another command block after the thank you. And what this command block will do is first of all, we want this as a chain and this is where it's different. We want to keep it as unconditional. It will always run no matter what. And we want it always active. So what we are doing now is testing the vault number objective. And that test is real easy. Scoreboard, players, test, and it's my individual. Vault num. Now we have 10 volts. So we want to test to see if the vault num is 11. And we want 11 because once it's at 10, right here, it'll change the player's vault objective to 10. And right here, it adds one to the vault number, which makes it 11. So if it is 11, so it was a difficult time trying to figure out what to put in this command block. So what do you do when the Vault number is 11 and there are no more vaults. So I came up with this. See over here on the side of this block, there is a sign. Sorry, the vaults are all sold out. Now what that does, what I came up with doing is cloning this sign over this purchase vaults button. So there will be no more button there. There'll be just a sign saying, sorry, volts are sold out. So once the 10 volts are filled, that's it. So that's what we're going to do now is clone. So we're going to call this place sign. And this goes back to chain and again, conditional, always active. So we just need to clone and the sold out sign is the pop in the coordinates for the sign itself. So we're going to clone the sign to the coordinates of the button. Just like that. So we're cloning the sign, which is at these coordinates, to the button, which is at these coordinates. Now, one thing I want to point out too, and I made did this to make it a little easier, is you notice the, the button that it's replacing is right back here, and you will be facing this way into it, which is also the way I have the sign facing. Now you can do it in commands to where you control the facing, but it's much easier to just place the sign in the facing you want and then just do a simple clone. And that's it, you're done. So the purchase part is, is complete now. So we test for the vault to make sure that it's at zero. We test to make sure they have 64 emeralds in their account. So you then we remove those 64 emeralds we do the operation where we uh, set the per player's vault to from zero to whatever the vault number is. In this case right now, it's one. 
Then we add one to the vault number, so the next player will have vault number two. And we say thank you. And you notice this is different right here. It's got that little dip, but this one does not, because this one's unconditional. We always want to test this vault number to make sure it's not at 11. If it is at 11, it will automatically place this sign over the button. So let's go ahead and just double check here. So my account, I have 64 emeralds. My current vault is at zero. And my vault number is at one. So we should be all set to purchase this vault. Oh, I got a typo in here. This is why you always test. Players test Emerald 64. Okay, so now that we've got that fixed, what we need to do is I need to set my, uh, we still have the emeralds in the account. The vault number is still at one, so that it didn't get activated because of my typo in that one, so that is okay. But my vault is at one, is at zero. Okay, so now everything's set back up. I have 64 emeralds in my account, and my vault is back at zero and the vault number is one so let's go ahead and show the vault so we should this hopefully this will work this time as long as i didn't typo again this is why you always test always test so bam and it still didn't work okay i had a few uh, typos in there besides the players was wrong i forgot to put the negative in front of the x uh, coordinate so that's why I said you always got to double check here. So well, hopefully this will work this time. There we go. And it says thank you. See, it says you whisper to Spunky Monkey, thank you for purchasing your vault. So vault is currently one. So vault number one has been assigned to me. So let's go and check just to make sure that vault number is now two. Oops, you see on the right there, the vault number is now two. So the next person will get vault number two. So that is how each individual person uh, each individual player will get an, a, a unique vault number. And that's it. It'll continue going until um, the sign happens. So let's go ahead and test the sign. Oh, let me show the vault here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use this little command block here. Add one to the vault. And it's a little, little cheat for testing, but I added one. So there's three, four. Okay, so now ten number number ten volt has been assigned. What we also need to do is increment the volt number itself, which I forgot a command block for that. Okay, so we now can add one to the volt number. And notice again, I'm using my own. My, my vault number is the only one that's going to count. So if anybody else does end up with the vault number, it's not really going to matter. Okay, the vault number is 10. So the 10th vault is about ready to be purchased. I'm a new player. I have no vault number. And I have 64 emeralds. So now I'm a new player and I'm about to buy the last vault. Oh, okay. I goofed up on this clone command. There's there's something else that's missing on it. Okay, see, so yeah, you have to actually put in the coordinates twice. You have the beginning, that's, uh, the beginning, the end, which is the exact same coordinates because we're just cloning the one block. And then we want to put the destination coordinates. So you actually end up with three sets of coordinates, the beginning, the end, and then the destination. So this is how you can clone multiple um, blocks at one time. But we just need to clone the one block. So hopefully this will work this time. <laughs> this is why you always test though, and I'm going to show you this. And there we go. So the vault number is 11. Sorry, the vaults are all sold out. So it replaced the button with the sign, so there's no way you can purchase any more vaults. Okay, now that we've got the purchase vault taken care of, the command line string, command block string for that, uh, now we need to do the go to. So once you have a vault, you just press that button to teleport to your individual vault. So the, how we do that is basically it's a lot of it's just two command blocks. Come down here and add the first one. 
of that dirt. And the first command is for test for fault one. And this first one we want is in impulse unconditional needs redstone because it's the first one to activate. And this command will be scoreboard players test closest player to the coordinates of the go to. And we are testing for a vault with a minimum of one and a maximum of one. So it'll only activate if vault is number one. And then the second command block is to teleport, oops, to vault number one. And this one will be chain, conditional, and always active. And this is just a simple teleport command. Closest player at the coordinates. So we want to teleport the player that's standing at these coordinates to vault number one, which is this coordinate. And that's it. So it tests for vault number one if the player's vault objective is at one, which I reset everything, so mine's currently at zero. So if it is at one, then this command block will activate to teleport to vault one, which is right over here. So let's go ahead. I did go ahead and reset everything. Uh, you can see my vault is zero. Vault number is back to one and I have 64 emeralds. So right now I don't own a vault and I'm about to purchase one. Okay, so now that everything's reset, let's test and make sure that it works properly. So here we are, we come up here, bam, vault number is one. Uh, thank you for purchasing your vault. And my vault number is currently one. So let's go on over here and this should teleport me to vault number one. Perfect. So I have access to my chest and we're ready to rock. So now let's go ahead and do this button here. So this button, this command, will be to teleport back. And we just wanna leave it as impulse, unconditional, and redstone. It'd be just a, a single teleport command. Teleport at P, the closest player to, and you want the coordinates of that current vault. And then the coordinates we want to put in is that return spot. And that's it. That should teleport us back. So let's go ahead and test that. Bam. There we are at the vault return. Perfect. So what I need to do is um, we'll copy this command block and I can put it on each individual vault with the proper coordinates and all I got to do is change the coordinates on on this particular command block. Now what I'll do here too is I'm going to go ahead and copy this one and actually yeah and copy this one. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the next one for you. Okay now this one will be a little different. Let's go ahead and bam, man, pop that on there. See, now it's, it's testing for Vault 1. And you notice it's impulse, unconditional, and needs redstone. So this one actually has to change for Vault number 2 to a chain. And we want it unconditional and always active. <clears throat> We're testing that. And all we got to do is change the 1s to 2s. So now it is a chain, and you notice it's unconditional. It doesn't have the little dip in the arrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that and recopy it right there. And then I just go ahead and pop these in and do it for each individual vault. Two, and then vault number two 
is 36, 67. So all I got to do is change this one to 4. And that's it. Now I just repeat these two command blocks just like this, where it's uh, unconditional, conditional, unconditional, conditional, unconditional, conditional, and I do that for each individual vault. So once I get that done, I will bring you back up for testing. Oh, and uh, I'll change all these command blocks so that they teleport us back. So I bring you right back. Okay, guys, I got them all in. And this for all 10 volts. Get rid of that now. Uh, let me show you how to a little trick on these uh, strings when you're doing this like this and you're having to curve it around like this. I told you it'd be a real long string. It depends on how many volts you got as to how many of these command blocks you're going to need because there's two needed for each volt. Remember, this first one needs to be impulse, but then after that, it needs to be uh, unconditional. So you can see unconditional, conditional, unconditional. Conditional, unconditional, conditional, unconditional. So that's how it goes on the pattern. But now when you're doing this, you want to make sure that this arrow is pointing to this block. If you don't do it this way, the command will stop in the middle of the string. Uh, if you uh, have this one pointing down and then trying to do a command block off of this, it will not work. So just a little, a little warning on that. Uh, but pretty much, you can see, I got to, you know, test, uh, teleport, test, teleport, test, teleport, test, teleport for each individual fault. Now, I'm already set up again to do a final test here. So we have uh, 64 emeralds in the account. Uh, vault number is set to 1 again, and I currently don't own a vault. All these have been coded. Um, the only thing I needed to really change or these, uh, this last variable on the bottom one. And on the top one, I had to change these last two uh, because of the height difference. Now you notice I set up the vaults again for facing so I don't have to code for facing because you're walking in this direction to press the button to go to the vault. And then once you're in the vault, which I'll show you in a second, then you be turning and facing the other direction and you'll be facing this way to press the button to go back which makes your facing correct to come out of this vault. So let's go ahead and do one final thing, and that's where this command block comes in. We'll show you in a second. So let's go ahead and purchase vault number one. That works out well, and then we'll go to the vault. So we're in vault number one. I did add this sign, press the button to return from vault, but you can access your chest, and then see you're facing this way to press the button and voila, you're facing correctly on the return. So now what I can do is, that's where this comes in, I just cheat a little bit, and so now my vault number is two. Bam, I'm in vault number two. And it'll be a totally different chest. Matter of fact, I'll even throw a piece of carpet in there. So there we go, we got a vault, and we can go back to the vault number two. And our carpet is still in here. So I can change it and do this and increment it. And this is how I can test for each individual and each individual vault to make sure that my teleportation codes are all correct. And voila, there we go. So there's one more thing we need to test. And I have already tested for all 10 volts, so everything's working good. Uh, the only thing that's left is it occurred to me um, there's one more command block I need at the end of the string, because what if somebody has no vault and they press that go to button? What happens at that point? Can't have that, right? So we need one more command block right here at the end. And this command block will be a chain, unconditional, and always active. And we want it to be called no vault. And the command for this is a again a tell to the closest player at the coordinates by the button. And after the coordinates, you just put what you want to say in there. 
you currently do not oops, own a vault. Please purchase one. And voila, that's it. Now I gotta get out of here. <laughs> okay, so my vault is at, again at zero. And because it's unconditional, it'll always run. But now you're gonna you're thinking to yourself, well, then it's always gonna say that, right? Not necessarily, because you have the coordinates for just the person standing at that area. And the trick is, is if you own vault number eight then you teleport to vault number eight. So you are no longer in this coordinated area to activate this command command block. So I currently don't own a vault. So if I come here and I want to go to the vault, you currently do not own a vault. Please purchase one. And voila, that's it. So that is the whole system. I can get rid of this command block. I think I'm going to uh, move these down to an individual just like I had to do on this side in order to fit these signs up here. So I'll, I'll do that just so it looks more even right now. It looks odd. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I will take care of that. But uh, that is the storage system. So there's 10 volts that can be purchased and, and that's it. You can go back from them and this sign, once the uh, 10 volts are filled up, this sign will replace that button so no more volts can be bought. And I believe I have all angles covered. Like I said, it's, it's something like this. You come up with an idea and you just have, um, you just take it a step at a time and, and figure out how to do each one. And once you got that down, it's mostly uh, rinse and repeat. And of course you have little, little things that you have to take into consideration. You know, what happens if somebody presses that go to vault button and they don't have a vault? Well, I want it to say something. So how do I get that to work? Well, that's how I came up with that because I'm using individual coordinates for this space and all these command blocks, if you do have a vault, teleport you away from that space. So this will not be shown unless your, uh, your vault is at zero. So that's really how that goes. And I think it's the same thing here for yeah, after thank you. Then this test for the vault number, if you uh, currently do own a vault or if it's the last vault, then it automatically places the sign. So if you purchasing the last vault, all of a sudden a sign is going to pop up in front of your face. But you will still have the vault number 10. So that is how I came up with the vault system. I hope you guys understand and uh, I'm trying to make it as explanatory as possible without being too confusing. Uh, if you guys have any comments, uh, please uh, list them below. I'd be more than happy to hear about them. Um, and if you come up with ways of uh, getting around this. Remember, you will be in adventure mode playing this properly, so you won't be able to break blocks or anything. So uh, if you come up with a way that you might be able to break it, let me know, and I'll see if I can figure out a way to uh, avoid that. And I probably will come up with some kind of a security system in here um, as part of the story. So if you do break in, uh, you'll like teleport to the jail or something along those lines. But we'll, we'll work on that in future episodes. But uh, I really appreciate you taking your time to watch me and make sure you click that like button and subscribe if you want to learn some more about these command blocks. Um, I, I'm learning along with you too. So uh, I'm having fun and I hope you guys are too. And so thank you for joining me in another episode of Creating the Kingdom of Earhart. And I will see you next time. Bye.